welcome everyone to this uh, panel. Today we'll be talking about listing approvals. We have uh, Chris and Sylvia. Uh, let me start by presenting uh, our panelists and then let them let them introduce themselves too. So I'll start with uh, Sylvia. Sylvia is now in London, if I'm not wrong, right? And yep. Sylvia is Italian. And uh, we met last year in London at the VRBO um, offices, basically, where I discovered that you had this uh, amazing idea uh, about a booking portal, which is, you know, getting bookings in this era of super big OTAs. Can you tell us um, what you do with uh, Dormoa, right? Dormoa.com. Uh, so Dormoa is uh, a news listing channel for selected accommodation. So just from property managers, a certain renting policy, uh, completely tailored and that targets completely Italian traveling abroad. So we started last year with a pilot test with London uh, with just uh, about 300 uh, listings selected. Uh, we've run the pilot test for about 12 months. It went really well. So we were opening all uh, the cities in Europe. Uh, and that started, we opened Barcelona as well. We started as well to add Paris as location and so on. Then COVID happened and uh, we pivoted the company completely and gave us a lot of opportunities actually. And now we launched Italy, all Italian domestic markets in the past 30 days. Uh, so we are aiming to select over 10,000 uh, holiday apartments in the next uh, uh, 30 to 35 days. We're already 1,500 now in just two weeks. Um, yeah, so and we launched as well another thing, which is a tourist app as well. So it's, um, uh, it's like a project for all Italian traveling inside Italy and get the most out of it in, in partnership with hundreds of bloggers, Italian bloggers. Well, so it's kind of a big project uh, and what do we do pretty much we just give Italians what is missing in the market which is like a niche channel dedicated to them that speaks like them that is creative for them instead of those big OTA with uh, you know 50 hundred thousand uh, possibilities in in just one city and it's quite confusing for them because they are very late adopters of OTA technology so that's so, um, two, two interesting points here. One is that you're going to select about 10,000 properties. So, the yeah. select part is the interesting part and that's why I called you because I want to know your perspective on listing selection. And the other one, the, the, the genius part of your idea, in my opinion, is that you are targeting people who are not comfortable in booking on Airbnb or booking is too difficult for them or they need well, a different approach? Or... Well, I always say uh, it, it's very simple. Like when you, mm, when you open up a, a, a brand in a country, you have to follow as well the trends of, you know, the behavior of this specific country, as well, which uh, most of OTA didn't do. They just launched, uh, you know, in Italy and they just assumed everyone was going to book, which of course it happened, but one thing that most of the people don't know at all is just 20% of Italians, they book through OTA. The other 80% still doesn't use OTA. And that's a very surprising thing. Airbnb just has a 9% market share uh, in Italy. So it's a huge, huge market with 75 million trips booked per year and 58 billion expenditure per year. Uh, which is kind of untouched and no one, I'm quite surprised to be fair when we created that and no one did it first. So luckily we, we had the chance to do it very well. Uh, so uh, mostly, you know, we just sort everything according to the specific tradition and behavior of, uh, of those guests, which, uh, which they, they, they required that. Then in, in a lot of little things, you know, I don't, I don't want to summarize all of them, but it's called uh, differentiation potential of original marketing. So it's when you when you open a brand and you completely tailor the brand according to the behavior of that specific country. China is a great example, for example, because they have a very different behavior in you know clicking on the right, red on the left, or whatever it is. So it's, it's according to country. Chris, uh, we we haven't actually uh, we have never met personally, but uh, <laughs> you you've done a lot of uh, 
or have we? Were you in Vacation Rental World Summit, maybe? No? Uh, no, 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 I, no, no. Okay. no, no, I wasn't there, no. Okay, cool. Um, so what, what you're doing, and let me first use my words and then you're gonna, you know, be a bit more precise probably. Uh, okay. You are verifying listings or properties. So you, you basically, and you tell us how you you go and you say this is a real property this is a real owner uh we guarantee that they exist so go ahead and book directly uh basically by removing the need to go through a major ota yeah. uh, because of the trust I issue well still if it's verified you're gonna be even more you know even through the OTA, it's another level of verification. Uh, so you are creating trust and making transactions easier, yeah. both in direct booking and in not direct booking. And these were my words, that's what, what I gathered. Could you, well, go ahead, tell me what you actually do. Sure. Go the well, yeah, well, I mean, IPRAC, IPRAC was founded with the with the intention of reducing fraud within the short term rental industry that's why that was its prime model at the start back in 2014 so what we looked at how the platform would work was that we needed to to look at the two operators which was property managers who were managing you know anywhere between 10 and 100 properties but then also private individuals who were renting their own so we have two different styles of approval that we go through with the IPRAC system. But what we do in terms of verification is we are not in any way a booking platform. We don't, we, you can't book via the IPRAC website. We are purely a verification platform. So in order for us to verify the members that we approve, they have to go through a robust application process where we, you know, we, we gather a lot of the data and documents that we require to do an internal review of that person, such as passport, you know, the proof of ownership, the proof of company registration document, passport, bank accounts, social media, email, phone. So we go through a lot of the data, but it, we need the information. So what happens with us is they apply with an application but they also have to provide a lot of the supporting documents. And I think that's where we're different in what a lot of other people do. And I'm sure we'll come on to that later on in the panel is what is verification? At what level do you go to? I mean, there's certain people say that they'll do it through reviews, through algorithms. But for me, you can't do it through reviews or algorithms. You've got to do it through specific data to know that somebody is actually the owner of that property that they're in a position to rent that property. It's not, they're allowed to sublet it or they are the owner or the, that agency exists as a registered agency in that country. So we do a lot of in-depth work and it can take anywhere for us two weeks to three, well, 10 days to two weeks to approve a member. So I'm a property manager and I come to you and say, please verify me. Yeah, and uh, and you charge me a fee for that. Exactly. That's how it works. And then That's this verification is: uh, does it expire, or do you have some? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a yearly. It's a yearly. It's a yearly membership. Okay. And when you become when you become approved, you get your IPRAC logo, and this is a very unique logo because your ID number is within the logo, so every logo is different. Okay. And that ID number is then linked back to your member's profile on the IPRAC website. So that's the traceability of a member. So it's not like, it's not just a logo on a website. This, this is a logo with your ID number in the logo, and that can be traced back by using the search engine on the IPRAC platform to then view the profile of that member and look at all of their credentials that have been verified. And, and me as a guest, I will find this logo in the website of the property manager uh and i can there's probably a link where i can go on the iprac website to check that this is not fake right so yeah 
Exactly. Yeah? Uh, can I, uh, will I also see it on Airbnb or Booking or Expedia or VRBO or not? No. And there's a reason for that because okay. obviously, you know, I mean, obviously Airbnb, they, you know, they don't want to see an IPRAC logo with the ID number because somebody could go off platform and contact ah, okay. that. Okay, of course. They can contact yeah, that member yeah. very easily of through course. the IPRAC search. Yeah, it's, it's like a key word to get out of the platform. The ID number. I see. And, and, yeah. Okay, great. Where, where are you? What's your accent from? Me? Well, I'm originally from uh, the north of England, Durham. Okay just south right. of Newcastle, right. but I moved to, um, I moved to Cannes, south of France. Oh, that's why you're in France. Oh, 20 okay. years ago. So I've lived, I've based here in Cannes since 2000, but that, that's where my journey started in short-term rentals because I'm, I own an agency here in Cannes, a corporate rental agency. So, right. I mean, I've managed that since the year 2000. So that was, that's where I got the idea from IPRAC, managing a rental agency. <laughs> I, I ask you because, I was living in Paris for a couple of years and one day I hitchhiked to Dublin and I remember when I got into UK and I was hitchhiking, I was understanding every, everything people said. And when I passed London, an hour out of London until Ireland, I was just sitting with people speaking a, a language I couldn't understand a word of. Zero. Absolutely. I mean, it was amazing. So I'm yeah. always curious of, of accents in UK. They're probably even stronger than Italy. I don't know. But yeah, okay, great. Um, so thank you for the introductions. Let me, let me tell you why we're here, basically. Um, of course, thank you for being here. Uh, we are trying to build a platform like, you know, Silvia has done. Uh, we are trying to build something more on the web tree on the next iteration of the web uh, but we encounter the same problem shall we just let anyone upload an apartment and, and see what happens or shall we verify them or approve them in some way and uh, we decided as a community we discussed this to to approve them um, because the, the main idea is that now there's a lot of data so there's you can see what people have done before in the in the booking platform so if they have two out of ten in booking why have them what's the advantage probably nothing right and at the same time the question is why you know when somebody uploads an apartment in airbnb from zero who is doing the verification well the guests are doing the verification so you if the, the host is good, you're going to have the first guest which goes, who goes there and gets a great holiday. But if the guest is bad, it takes maybe two or three bad holidays for Airbnb to decide that this is a bad host and, and you know, sink him or sink her down in the ranking. So they are basically outsourcing verification to the guests. And in a way, this is pretty bad because you are ruining people's holiday, holidays, right? Um, so we decided that it's not really in the interest of the guests and, and the host to just let anybody in. We're going to um, verify each listing. And we've done this in a, in a like, um, last year we, we tested this thing. We had people uploading and we had all the verification process. It was pretty interesting, pretty good. So, but that was like a, a test. Now, I'm going to assume that both of you are saying there needs there need to be some verification. So I want to ask Silvia, uh, you do verify, you do approve, or you do um, invite people on your platform. What's your process? What's your logic behind this? And why do you do that? Why don't you just get everybody? So, well, to get everybody is quite easy. So, you know, you can go everywhere and find, you know, uh, her, um, apartments everywhere. I mean, first of all, I just would like to say one thing. We do property managers, so we do not do private, which I think it, it takes two different discussion to, you know, for me, it's two, maybe two different jobs, two different markets, because uh, one is private, if someone is doing his free time, it could be amazing. It needs different kind of verification. In terms of property manager, we, we decided to verify, uh, first of all, because uh, I might sound bad, but in the past six to seven years, a lot of people opened property management companies without, you know, 
uh, you know, focusing on quality or just, you know, it's kind of a money maker. So, and that is, you know, it's not good for the guest because the guest, you know, now the, the holiday apartments are kind of, you know, you know, they, they're quite nice by, by average, you know, you, you expect like a sort of hotel treatment, you expect like this kind of experience. So, um, first of all, then in too many websites, I think there are too many properties, which is very confusing for the guest uh, and is um, and there are a lot of scams could be uh, i had one myself i'm a property manager in london i have uh, over 5000 guests a year and about 35 properties and buildings and um, i had personally scam myself from property managers my colleagues yeah so it's it's something that is not very rare to find that as Sorry, well. what happened you as a guest or i can, uh, can't really explain that much oh. but pretty much one um i will explain you later in case we go deeply in that but just in case you know it's not because you're a property manager that means this is good yeah oh okay it's a different kind of property manager so mm -hmm. i mean uh, we decided to select for one reason. First of all, because uh, it's, according to us, there are too many listings in the market. So, and we, we want to prize actually property managers that do a good job because being a property manager with over 20 or 30 properties and being able to keep those consistent of eight, pl eight plus reviews, you know, and great customer service and whatever we think needs to be prized. The second reason why we decided to, you know, select them as well is is according to the Italian markets because, you know, they they quite confused when there are too many choices. So it's much better to have less and verified. So on our side, when you go inside, it's quite easy. You don't have to go through 100,000 properties. You go through maybe just 500, but you, you exactly know those 500 are exactly verified. And... Uh, we give the guests as well the opportunity to review the property at the end internally with us because we actually take uh, the feedback of the um, uh, of the guest and uh, we keep reviewing the quality of the property manager over time as well which is very important it's not i think it's not just the first selection we have to do but it's the continuous one because the more the property managers grow, it could be different kind of operational problem or whatever. So you never know how the company develop. It can have 9.0 the first year, and then they have seven properties more, and it drops down on three, three on ten. So it needs a constant. We do that to guests. Um, on the other side, you're right as well. The guests can be, you know, quite challenging. So every time as well, there is a review. We, we value as well, like what the review and if the complaint is real or not. On our side, yes, it's a lot of work because, for example, in the past two weeks, we got about 6,000 uh, Italian properties that signed up on our site and we just accepted 1,500. So it's it's a really big job but i think it prizes a lot i give you an example now this week uh, we're receiving so many requests from italians and they don't actually choose the property they just send us an email and say where is dormo in italy where wh where are you like where do you have properties so because it's easier for them mm -hmm. so that that's been quite surprising for us this week that people ask us where we are because we selected everything and that help us as well to create a great community between the host and the guest. So that's that's pretty much like. Uh, well, that, that's exactly the the approach we are having. Um, it, 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 sometimes I wonder why the big OTAs don't do that, and the answer could be that they simply want to have the whole market. They are generalist booking portals. Everything has to be there, and then they're gonna they're gonna basically push up the best for them, not for the guest, in my opinion, but anyway. Uh, but in terms of um, conversion, because you, you, you spend money to bring people on your platform, and if you, if you have only selected apartments, it should just be better by default. But apparently, they think differently, and, and I'm sure because they're successful, this works. So it's one of the situations in which what you're saying makes 100% sense and what we have brought in our white paper makes sense to us but the reality seems distorted because the reality shows that the successful platforms are not doing that and this distortion must come from somewhere and maybe it comes from the fact that there's just 
like too much traffic, everything is on them. So it's going to work anyway with wherever, whatever they do. Uh, so Chris, do, I don't know, uh, how do you convince people to be verified? What's the, what's the reason most of your customers actually get verified? Because my, I think that mo many of them self-select. The, the very reason they come to you and they want to be verified is because they already are a bit, bit you know, a higher level than, than the average. Is that correct? Yeah, I suppose it is. I mean, I, I think one of the, 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 the trends that we see in verification, it comes out people are looking at building businesses, you know I mean? If, let's say for instance, you've got uh, one person who's got an apartment in London and he's a doctor and he's quite happy putting his apartment on it, on Airbnb or booking.com, getting, you know, 30 grand a year. That's it, he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't really need to think about change. You know, he's not really looking to become verified. He's not looking to increase the direct booking model. He's quite happy with what he's getting through the, through the OTAs. Maybe he pays a small commission to a property management company who manage the rentals, and he's happy. So you can't think everybody wants to be verified, but I think what we see is mainly is property owners who are feeling that they don't get enough revenue from the OTAs because of the amount of you know, inquiries against conversion. Because, of course, you get a lot of people inquiring about your property, but then they don't book. So that's probably because it's driven by price somewhere else. So a lot of verification comes from a desire to become more independent. And I think once you want to become independent, you cannot, you can't get into the short-term rental business on an independent way in terms of direct bookings if you can't showcase credibility or trust or payment guarantee. That's why people use booking platforms because they've spent billions on marketing to, get, to gain that consumer trust. And, that's, and as soon as you take that booking platform out of the scenario, then there's no building, there's no, there's no centerpiece of trust. You've got a client dealing direct with somebody they don't know. So the only way to create that booking is build that bridge of confidence. And the build of conf that build of confidence is what IPRAC is that, jig, is that piece of the jigsaw that gives that verification. So that's where we find most of our members, applic applicants, are coming on board because they want to maybe tip the scales a little bit. Maybe they're at about 90% reliant on OTAs and they want to bring that down to maybe 60. So they might want to increase direct bookings by about 30%. And they need verification for that. So they'll invest so in verification. It's definitely a move to increase direct bookings. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Uh, do you verify properties or do you verify listings too, in a way? Like, uh, like, do you look at the pictures? Do you look at the reviews? Or you just you look, look at, at the fact that the property is, is, is real and, and legal? No, 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 no. We have to, we, like I said before, there's a... We've, we've got a very robust system. So the application is they have to complete. I mean, we have two different forms of application. It's a completely different process for a property manager because a property manager, we're verifying the business. We don't verify all of the properties that they manage. We're verifying that that business exists as, a, oh, okay. as an operator. Sorry. Mm -hmm. as, a, as an operator. Because we're not, we're not when, when we talk about verification, we are talking about verifying a property against rental fraud to make sure that property exists, which is the biggest problem that we have in the market today. So we have two different ways of approving. So property managers is one way and private owners is another. But let's say for a private owner who applies, they have to provide us with supporting documents such as the proof of ownership of the property. I mean, that's a document. In different countries, it's a different document, but we, they have to upload that as an external document as part of the process. And we've got about 12 supporting documents that a private owner would need to, to give us to support their application. So how much is it? About, just to give an idea, uh, how much is one verification for a property manager? Just, eight, you know, eight, roughly. It's 899 pounds. This is for the, the business? For the year, for the year. And, year, okay. and, three, 
and £399 for a private owner with one property. Okay, and do you pay also for per property or no? There's just yes. that. Yeah, you don't, you care, because each property has got its own approval, might have a different owner. So you, every, every, if it's a private owner and he's got two properties, then we would verify two different properties. It'd be two if different. If it's a property properties. manager, just the 899 just, or? Yeah. Okay. Property manager, 899, and we verify their business as, an oper as, a, as a legitimate business operating in the short term rental. Okay, let, let me ask you a question here because you are focused on giving the service to the property managers or, or the, the private people. But do you have you ever done this for an OTA? Uh, have, have you done it for somebody like Trips or somebody like Sylvia? Like, would Sylvia uh, with Dormoa.com, would she uh, be able to show IPRAC if she wanted to? Uh, and then I'm going to ask later Sylvia if she wants to, like if it's interesting or not. Like these extra trust you build, can it be spent somewhere else? Have you ever thought about this? Because with well, trips, it could make sense. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, the thing, the, the, the difference between, with, let me try to explain, because the thing is with IPRAC is it's not just a logo. Okay. So there's a, there's a, the, the IPRAC platform is designed in a, in a way where it's got traceability back to the, to, the, to the provider and that consumer can register the booking that they've made and guarantee their rental payments to that, to that member. So, oh. we've got a, so we've got a process. We're not, we, don't, we actually give the payment guarantee 100%. So if you book through an IPRAC member, you can pay that member as long as it's paid to the registered bank account that we've verified and we guarantee 100% of that payment to that member. But th this, is this compulsory or can you just sh like, okay, let me let, it's not, no. it's not compulsory, but, you, but if you don't register the booking, then you can't guarantee your rental payment. Okay. L let me, let me ask Sylvia, uh, do you see anything interesting in this kind of concept? Like to, to have an extra layer of trust? It is. For an OTA? I was actually thinking about some brainstorming later. So, <laughs> you, you know me, Luca, I, I, I start you know, to think. No, it's, it's very interesting, I think, especially for private owners. It's very, very interesting. Because, um, uh, yes, di direct bookings as well with private owners, you know, um, you know, normally you tend to go an OTA to do that. I mean, with property manager, it depends because if they have a beautiful website and whatever, maybe, you know, you can kindly trust it but yeah private owners i would i would say maybe yeah so that means you know 50, 50. Um, yeah. but private owner yeah definitely and yes it could be it could be one thing that uh, you know we, we can discuss but uh, i think very fine properties it, it's supposed to be a must now um, it needs to be as well for the guests because uh, you know it, even with direct bookings, especially with that, payments go directly to you know to to the house and yeah. credit card and everything is a lot of details. So it, it needs to be verified where your money come go go to. If a fake company, a fake LTD in UK, I don't know, but it could be, or even for safe deposits. Mm. But which is what which is what we do. I mean, we verify it, so any payments made to a IPRAT member are guaranteed. So that gives that trust to the consumer. Let me see this from Trip's point of view. So we are getting a listing. We're going to approve it because we, we look at the listings in the other OTAs. Say, okay, this is a person who gets good reviews, and we're going to let let them apply. But somebody comes in and says, I also have an IPRAC verification mm -hmm. um, question can this person show the iprac logo in our ota and so would you allow this we uh, would allow it of course okay okay and the only thing would be that they could click it or look at the number and go directly but this is not a problem in trips uh, we are ha happy if they go out of the platform yeah. to book. this is this is uh so it works yeah. for us yeah uh, so, Okay, so we, we could have an extra layer of security of verification because the, these, these property managers are IPRAC verified. Okay, yeah. okay. May I, have, and, may I have one thing, Luca, sorry, um, for the question you asked me before. 
Yes, it could be, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, with Dormois, one thing that we decided is to provide after the reservation. Of course, we are, you know, a niche channel, so we can't give the email of the, the host and everything straight away. Um, but after the reservation, we always provide all the full details of the property manager and we explain to guests exactly what will happen, let's say three days before you receive an automatic email. So we work with the property manager as well in order to make the customer understand what's the flow. But the most important thing is that I, I believe that if you are a channel and you get paid a commission, uh, this is your customer and you're supposed to be able to work on that customer. So with Dormois, we made a decision to, to not uh, create a chat, internal one, whatever, but just give the email and the phone number and everything, which makes it much easier. And that's why we want as well to verify, you know, that the property manager, if they have good quality, if they behave well and whatever. For doing that as well, we keep the payment still, the check-in day as well, as a double, even for sure that, you know, the guest arrives and everything is fine and safe. So, so it's something that, uh, to answer your question before, Lucas, sure. sorry. Sure. Um, Chris, uh, so let me see if there's, because um, we discussed this before. Um, so people upload their apartment in TRIPS, uh, TRIPS approves it. Uh, is there any part in this process where IPRAC could get in and offer his, or I mean, his services directly to the non IPRAC owner? So they come in and they are not non -I they don't even know about IPRAC and we can show them, look, there's a, we're going to show them IPRAC and, pro and probably other competitors too, if they exist, I don't even know if they exist, but we will say, if you want to ver extra verify or get a better, uh, a higher mm -hmm. level of verification, these companies do it for you. Yes. And, um, and then, you know, we we'll probably give a link or an API like that's it. Would that be interesting? Because what, what you provide here is a paid service to the host or the property manager to improve their verification level, their trust. And yes. we as a platform, we are happier, more happier than than if they didn't have it. So because it's more trust for the platform itself. Yeah. Could that work? Yes, it could work. I mean, I think I think one of the most important areas of where we are today in the short-term rental industry is where is where the future of the short-term rental industry is going because where we are at the moment with say let's say airbnb and booking.com two great companies who are doing great things for the industry but do they have is their future in how they're operating in terms of consumer trust and also with people with hosts actually listing so i mean i think there's definitely a new era on the horizon for the terms of a booking platform that brings a lot more because i i think a lot of the consumers who use airbnb and booking.com they don't understand that there's fraudulent listings on their platforms they don't think that but there is and this is a problem i mean i always believe that a booking platform of that level should be stopping that at source so it's not like, say, what booking.com would say if they arrived a fraudulent listing at the end of the booking and somebody arrived and it, they, would, they would work with that client and say, oh, we'll find you something else or we can put you in a hotel for one night, but, you know, we, we'll investigate this. But let's be honest, it shouldn't happen. And that's got to, that's got to start at the source. That's it, the listing. Why don't they do it? Is it just too expensive to do or...? It's too, well, it's time consuming, it's too expensive, and Sorry. they'll lose too many listings. I mean, listen, it's free to list because once you list on their platform, they make money from you once you start getting bookings. But they're not going to pay. Let, let me make it quite clear to it. The reason we charge £899 and £399 to verify is because to do a complete and full review and verification costs money and time. You can't just do it in a quick 10 minute uh, chat with a couple of people. So you've got to, there's a system that we've designed and we've got technology that we've invested in that gives us the, the confidence that once we've approved a member, we, we're quite happy. We're 100% we approve that member because he's IPRAC approved. But booking.com are letting anybody list and the way they protect the consumer 
is by just paying the host when the guests arrive. But that's, 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 that's just like kind of lottery work. That's just hoping everything's going to work out at the end. And nine, maybe eight times out of 10, it will work out, but it's a risk. And the risk is if, if booking.com are really confident of their listings, why don't they pay the owners when they book? They don't. They wait until the guest arrives, gets the keys and gets inside. Then they know that there's no fraud going to happen because they're in. But that's like a six month period where maybe a host is going without income. So he might get a, a confirmed booking from booking.com in January for two weeks in August. So he's waiting six months before he sees one penny. Now that's not really looking at the host's point of view. I'm sure a host would like to think that they could get paid prior to, the, prior to getting inside of the, of the property. There's other variables that come in with that, but I think it's important that the new era of booking, booking platforms verify the listings. They might not grow as quick and go to 5 million listings very, as quick as what, a, what, a non, what, a, what an OTA doesn't verify their, their listings with, but it's more secure for the consumer. And if you can market an OTA that every one of their properties is verified to this standard or this level, then consumers are going to flock to that booking, to that booking platform because that's where they feel secure. And it's all about the experiences as well. When you book, you've got to have that experience of when you've booked in January, you're not worried all the way through to August until you get the keys. So you've, the day you book, you should feel comfortable that when you get there, that property is going to happen, that, that property is going to exist. And that's what verification is all about. It's not just about preventing fraud. It's about increasing the consumer experience as well. Can I, can I give you one, uh, one story? I mean, it's, uh, it's, mm. it's quite... It's, um, I love a story. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a, actually a story that happened to me personally with my property manager com management company. And it was not about onboarding the property manager. It was about something that the property manager was doing after. So it was a verified property manager because I, I, I knew this company. And what happened, uh, one of the landlord gave us the contract uh, to, as a changeover. And uh, we went on booking.com. You know, when you sign up, you have to agree the terms and conditions, the contract to take over a property, you know, like the, the building, the other person yes. managing before. So we did all this process. And, and I, I personally signed because I'm the director. And um, after five hours of I, I signed, I start to receive in for 48 hours calls from all over the world from customers shouting at me and telling me they were calling the police. Uh, and I, we tried to contact, you know, you know, this platform. I don't want to say the name to be fair. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, but, but anyway, the, the problem um, that I would, um, the point is um, all the call centers of this OTA were completely disconnected. So if there was a problem with a customer in Italy, they didn't know that in the customer service in UK. And if there was in Japan, they didn't know. So actually, mm. Uh, even the investigation, it took about five months. And this property management company stole 25,000 pounds of safe deposit. They have been taking one night stay for, for a building massive for over two, 300 guests and keep taking deposit and deposit and deposit, never get them back. So mm -hmm. I personally, when I, when I joined and you signed the contract, uh, they, uh, they wanted me to pay. That's why it went so long and I had to follow it. But one thing that I realized there, which helped, you know, Dormo as well as an experience, it was, it was amazing experience, is to have a very centralized customer service as well, if you are an OTI. Because if your customer service in Japan doesn't talk to the one with America, and you just yeah. in cases in which are different, even, even if the property manager is super, super verified at start, it, it can do something wrong in the middle without being notified. And this, mm -hmm. actually, this property management company is still open and it's still on that platform. Yeah. So nothing happened. And yeah. it's, quite, it's quite concerning for me. Like, uh, you know. But uh, there's a lot of cases like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cases like uh, similar to that as well, which is why you've got to try to get to a level of, 
of more continuity in terms of verification and trust and confidence within the industry for for consumers as mainly for consumers but to try to get professional operators all in one place where they can say this is where the good guys are you know and that's why where do you think they, they get away with it i mean well it, laws there's law it takes too long i mean you've got to first of all i mean even when you even when you report no i'm sorry the, the otas uh, well how you know they, they allow this to happen they could stop it okay it's expensive but they don't do it how do they go to get, get away with it i mean well, I guess why do they still work i guess when you have so high numbers of properties and property owners and you start in a certain way rebuilding the process i tell you we we started italy as a personal experience has been really crazy in the past three, four weeks because we, we really went through each one of the listing, checking the quality, checking the property manager, you know, we did a, it's a big, big job. But imagine if we would do that when we are already on 100,000 properties. Well, no, I, I guess it's hard to go back, but you know, so what you guys are telling me is that there's a lot of frauds. It's risky. They don't do any kind of verification. Still, they own, they own the market. So wh why are they not? Why is the market not punishing them? Well, I have an answer. I just want to hear yours first. Got, That's why got fantastic like, PR companies, haven't they? Say again. Sorry, Chris. They've got fantastic PR companies. PR Who companies. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah. I mean, what? There, there was an article... There was an article a while ago that where there was ten there was ten women from Paris. They booked on Booking.com, and they they booked on Booking.com. Arrived in I think it was Tel Aviv to rent the big villa. Villa didn't exist, so they called Booking.com. Booking.com said, "Oh, it's not our problem." They had that kind of getting transferred over as soon as the BBC, a, like a platform of media, got involved. Booking.com were all over it. Oh, we'll find them somewhere else. We'll find, you know, they put the fire out. But there's, but the, the fraud is happening all of the time across the, around the globe, and they're waiting for it. They've got departments ready to ready to deal with it when that happens. But like I said before, we've got to be reducing that at source. So let's not let the properties, the, the fake properties, get on these platforms. We've got to stop them getting on the platform. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go to the next to the next part here, and I'm very curious about this. Okay, you approve the listings, uh, Sylvia, and you kind of uh, approve also your listings, Chris. Yeah. What happens when you have to refuse them? And from from what I gather, you refused most of them, Sylvia. How do you manage the refusal? Why you why do you refuse them, and what do you tell them? Well, that's uh, yeah. So, um, I, well, I give you an example. So, even if we accept one property manager, but this is, I think, I need to make a, a, a line here because I prac, you know, prevents fraud and whatever. We must like take the quality and select in order to have less properties and verified and everything. So, I wouldn't say we do the same of him because the job oh, is different, you know, of course. Yeah. 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 So, but still you have to say no that's the hard part isn't it yeah well i give an example we we got one company with about uh, uh 600 properties that joined uh they joined okay but we selected core 133 give okay. an example the reason why is not because we already say that to the property manager when they start we have certain standards we want you know to to reach so we, we keep monitoring the other properties. So every, every six or eight months, we recheck them. We have, we have a database that with the reminders to recheck the properties so if they hit the standards. But, you know, that's, um, that's how it works. And we explain exactly how it works to the host. Uh, if we don't do private owners, which makes it a bit more simple. It's, yeah. We are receiving a lot of requests from private owners. They want to list on dorm one now. But yeah, that's, that's the best part for me because some of them, they are amazing. Unfortunately, you know, our uh, business model, it goes on property managers. So that's, that's the refusal. But, 
And for the quality, we had a company that we didn't accept none of them, for example. Okay, what do you tell them? We just say the properties are not qualified. Doesn't it generate uh, kind of bad feelings and then I start saying, you know, normally when you are refused, the next thing is like, yeah, they're not good, right? They're going to say, yeah, otherwise, you know, like speak behind your back and this kind of things. Well, they can, but we are generating bookings. So that means works. So if they want bookings, they just need to get to a certain standard, which is, is not difficult. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying uh, I just pick you. And you know, I'm just saying you have standards, for example, in coronavirus, and that's what bring it up even more. We are doing a massive job on protocols of coronavirus. So we, we select as well property managers according to the cleaning system and to whatever. If you are a property manager and you have a company which runs and you don't do that, well, this is your entrepreneurial mistake. It's, not, it's nothing to do with the fact I like you or not. But Dormo is, is more a community. You know, Luca, you know Dormo very well. You know, we, we have over 60,000 followers just at the start. We have 150,000 views. We just launched an app with over 4,000 itineraries. So it's more a community. So we want to offer our community quality. Anyone can enter. There is no limit of number. It's just you need to provide quality. Can yes. you reapply after your heartless refusal? <laughs> yes, of course, they can. They can. They have like a period of time. Of we have them in the database. They can even reapply like after a month or two. As long as they fix their, their like things. Sometimes, sometimes there are properties in which are middle way. Mm -hmm. So I give an example. We, we do a proper screening in terms of reviews. Uh, uh, we know that sometimes guests can place reviews that they are not a fault okay. of the yeah. manager. It happens to me all the time as well. Uh, so we have a rule when they are on the edge of the quality, we go and check all the reviews. We do a big job uh, to make sure the reviews are in that way or in that way. Or if they are borderline, we place them, for example, in the economy, you know, easy. So we did a category as well for who wants very low prices, like middle quality. We are trying, you know, to include everyone, but we want the customer know exactly what they get when they arrive. We don't want beautiful photos and then they arrive and they are so unsatisfied. Then it's a lose, lose, lose anyway. So no one will be happy. Uh, in trips, one, no, in trips, this is all theory for the moment. So when we refuse people because it's a community, we're going to say, look, you, you have not been accepted. Uh, first of all, it's, it's not a decision taken by some, somebody in the company. It's taken by, by the network through a decentralized system. We discussed this in a previous workshop. Um, but we tell them, okay, you do not qualify for these reasons. Here, what you can do to improve here are the people, some people can help you. These people will help you for free. These people will help you uh, for a charge in your city. So, so we try to help them improve. Um, do you do something like that? Do you can give them an exit and say, yeah. uh, try to change this and that? And I think you have to do that with anybody. I think you have to do that in any form of life. You know what? It's, it's, you're going to refuse somebody. You've got to tell them how they can. Come oh, you back did this with your girlfriends. You tell them come back. Yeah. You know, Everyone, redo your hair. You know, of course. <laughs> no, you haven't quite. You haven't right reached the standard. Go back. Come back. Go All right. You never. You never close the door on anybody, but you've got to right. give them. You've got to give them the right positive feedback of what your brand's all about. Why right. they haven't. Why they haven't been. You know. Why they haven't been arrived to do it this time but tell them why you don't just say to somebody no you have to give them the right the right feedback the positive feedback so that they can either go away and come back and reach your standards or they don't or they don't come back at all but you can't but you still got to have you you still got to have your standards you still got to have your protocol Do, does it happen that's a question for both of you does it happen that after the first refusal they improve and they come back and you approve them we do would you we, say we, this is happens yeah. often or uh, we do. Yeah, it happened we a do. lot of times in London. Oh. It happened a lot of times last year. We were working with a company that, for example, for some properties, we removed them because the, the guest feedback went down quite a lot. So we just simply called them and say, you know, in order to be back again, 
We removed them for three months and then we went back again and add them. Quality went super high uh, again. So they are on the platform. They are our best seller at the moment. So I'm not saying, you know, we, oh, right. are, we are, you know, oh, you can't get in in this size or whatever. It's just, there is another factor as well. Like if you, if you as an OTA have less properties, you are more likely to give bookings to host more frequently. And that's another important thing. I'm a property manager myself. And if I don't receive bookings from a new channels, I get really bored. I get really upset because my team wasted time in the connection, all this kind of stuff that costed me money. And then I don't have bookings. That allow us with Dormo, for example, as well, to have less hosts, more quality and provide them more bookings as well instead of having half a million listings and then you know maybe the good ones the really really great ones they don't get any bookings and someone else get them so we try it's it's a complicated balance uh, that we, we're trying to make but i think you know the hosts that are working with us they get bookings regularly they happy and they 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 put efforts as well to improve because they know they can get some bookings out of us maybe um, have you, Chris, have you changed your parameters in time? How long, how long has IPRAC been, been working so far? Five, well, we started, we started in 2014. Okay. But, we got um, but the official launch was 2016, just this for four okay. and a half, five years. Did you change the parameters yeah. in the, okay. Absolutely. Any interesting... Been, Okay. Anything interesting to say about that? Like what, what were you thinking was important and wasn't or vice versa? What did you change? In well, I think we, we, I mean, you know, we're always developing the approval process. I think that's one of the things that we are really, are really looking to do it all on a higher level at all of the times to reduce time. We're, we're always looking to try to invest in technology where we can reduce the, the approval process because at the minute we're anywhere between like 10 days and two weeks. So we're always looking to try to make that, you know, um, reduce that amount of time before we even approve somebody. And we're always looking to add value in terms of what we provide consumers in terms of the profile of a member. So what information we give consumers to verify. I mean, if you so look you at- So you added the information? Yes. Yeah. Is there anything you removed? Like you told it was important, but then it wasn't or difficult to control no. or no? No, okay. we've never, we've never, we've never removed anything. So we're, we're really looking to add, you know, like different things. I mean, we're, we're hoping to partnership with things like, you know, with uh, three words and, and other things that can oh, bring three words. That yeah. Can, yeah. And also we're going to be doing an integration with Google maps as well, that a Google map can certify on the actual, agency's profile which will be another good integration so we're always looking to improve what the members profile can can provide the public the consumer um, but it's all it's all about the data we're trying to get you know we're working in 28 countries right now so 28 countries the data is a lot different you know proof of address in one company in one country is different to what you would provide in another country so we've got different so we're, we're trying to bring a lot of that in together and make timings, you know, less. So we, we would like to try to get the approval down to like five to seven days. Okay. Could That's I how we get. Could I ask a question to you? To, um, just want to ask you, for, because you, you know, you, you, you try to increase as well the direct booking side of the host, uh, which is yes. very important. Uh, um, in terms of guest payments, yeah, does it give any kind of documentation as well on support? I give you an example. Uh, Stripe, you know, is, you know, when mm -hmm. a guest can pay, arrive at the property, that happened to us a lot of times. They arrive at the property, they enjoy, and then they mark the card as fraudulent payment just to pretend with their bank. And we're most likely to lose that. Sorry, they, they, they mark the payment fraudulent. Like yeah, the guest they, does this. It happen a lot of times. They call the bank, uh, they call the bank, they, they say, uh, these payments I don't recognize. So the banks block the payment. And then Stripe takes about three to four months to, you know, to uh, generate mm -hmm. documentation and whatever. 
And sometimes uh, a lot of property managers, they don't have maybe the right documentation. They just have the booking confirmation. They just may have the invoice. But that, for example, on my side, a couple of times has been not enough, even if I had the documentation. Mm. So yeah. would, you, would you introduce something to avoid that as well? Because we it's, very, it's very already there. It's all, it, this is the booking. This is when you, conf you're booking, when you confirm your booking on the iPad platform. Yeah. We've, 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 we've worked with quite a lot of, um, with PayPal and Stripe, you know, they, they have um, litigation departments where somebody stops the payment of the card. Exactly. Then when you register your booking on the iPad platform, there's a, there's a three-way strip email that goes out. There's one goes to the property owner or manager who's doing the booking. One goes to the person who's booked the property and the other to IPRAC. So, that, so all three people know that that booking exists. Okay. That's a okay. So, so when we go to PayPal or Stripe or any pay or World Pay, and we go to their litigation department and we show the documentation that this guest entered into a contract and used the booking reservation on the IPRAC platform, Within 24 hours, the, the money's released back to the to the guest to the host. That's very good. Otherwise, we protect we protect them in that way because that's why we guarantee everybody to go through the registered booking system yeah. so you can guarantee your payment for fraud. But it also it also helps the the host guarantee their payment with the guest. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's through, the, okay. through the red. Yeah. So that's already in place and. And we've worked a lot with uh, PayPal, Stripe, WorldPay on, like you say, guests think they can be clever and they want to try to, you know, cancel the booking or it's fraudulent and then negotiate a different price. But as soon as we can prove that they've already agreed and registered a booking at that amount and they've agreed to pay it and they've already paid it, that PayPal, Stripe, all of them, they just know they release the payment. There's no litigation to discuss. Do you guys think that you should verify the guests too in some way? That's difficult. Sometimes I think a little bit, yes. But I mean, we did a we did a poll on that, and I think a lot of the time, sometimes consumers can feel a little bit, um, you know, put out by that. You know, and it's like, who are you? What do you do? Let me investigate you. So like, why would you want to do that? You know, it's like I just want to come on holiday. You know, so. You, I think you can lose more bookings verifying your guests and trying to decide who's going in. Look, if you want to put a guest in your property, have the right, in, have the right contract, hold the caution, the deposit, the damage payments, do everything right. And, you know, and it is a little bit of a lottery, but you don't want to be starting to, to, to interrogate your guests before and they do this, arrive. Do this behind the scenes in the sense that when a guest pulls this trick, like the one Sylvia mentioned, like have a blacklist in which you inform your customers that this guest has tried one this thing in the past please don't accept him no no i think i don't think you can do that i mean listen some somebody who might be having a bad day on a tuesday he might be a good guy on a thursday you can't you can't you can't turn around and say to somebody who maybe had a party in a property on a tuesday because it was a world cup final and maybe he goes with his wife on a Thursday or somewhere else and he gets blacklisted for what happened on the Tuesday. You know, that, you've got to well, be... But you know, he, he, I, there's I there's people who do this, uh, like serial offenders they, and hotels have always been doing this. They call each other and they have these lists. I, I, a million years ago, I did it in my booking platform in, in, the, in Prague and the other cities around there. We had, because everybody was booking through our platform in Prague, Budapest or other cities. And once, once in a while, there was this bad guest who would try, you know, to pull some tricks and we had the blacklist. And then when they tried to contact them, the host will know and they will not accept the booking. So I, there could be something there. It's called black guest blacklist and uh, we should I mean, keep an yeah, eye. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but I think you've got to be, you've got to be very careful at what level you go to in terms of, you know, how you blacklisting people and you know oh, if you want to yeah. on, on the blockchain and web tree this is extremely easy but we don't have time to explain but uh identity on the blockchain is much much harder than identity on on web 2 so right. web 2 you can create an account 
uh, you get a very bad review in, as a guest mm -hmm. in, in, in Airbnb, well, you're going to create another one and that's it. While on, on, on Web3, uh, the, the reputation is, is much more, uh, it cannot be changed. So it's a, it's a, it's a thing for another mm -hmm. day, but yeah, uh, sure. it, it kind of, it kind of uh, yeah, works I, better there. I, I never happened uh, till now, so we're lucky. <laughs> so, yeah. You never had a bad guest? Um, not really, because okay. well, our target is mostly families and people between okay. 30 to 55 with kids normally, 80% or 90%. Then, yes, there has been disputes between host and... But as, as well, like if you are a property manager, I expect you in some way to verify your guest on arrival and do a proper job as well in that, in, in that way. As an OTA, uh, we, we will see is a, is, is a good point. It's a very good point. But, you know, you can, you can book with so many emails now and change so many days. So many yeah, days. but the thing is, uh, just, you know, maybe we can talk another day. Uh, it was great because the guest wouldn't know it they wouldn't know they are in the blacklist and they would try with the same email. Oh, okay. So yeah, when you tell them, of course, the friend is going to book, but otherwise not. But that, that's something for another day. Uh, we're going to have a panel on this too. Okay, yeah. that's, uh, that's been great. Is there anything you would like to, to add before we finish? Well, I would. I think, listen, the panel was all about verification. So I believe that all listings should be verified and at I don't know to what level, but um, I mean, I know the level, I don't think there's anybody out there who's verifying listings and property managers and owners to IPRAX level. Um, but I think we have to change the future of short term rentals and become more consumer focused on providing yeah. a platform, a platform that consumers can just book and not worry about fraud to a level. I, at the minute, it's it, it's too high. There's too much there's too much dis, discomfort in the in the in the world of short term rentals. So we have to verify listings. We have to get to that to that stage. Uh, it confirms uh, it confirms because our pilot test was all driven by that pretty much in London. Mm -hmm. When we started, you know, we said, okay, we're going against Booking.com and Airbnb. Wow, let's see how is it going. And actually, we had a very high amount of bookings the first year without even having a review on our side, without nothing. And I was, I was personally, as a, as a founder, I was surprised. I was like, wow, that works. And that's, that's exactly the reason why you're saying, because people now have this feeling now of, you know, it's, it, for them, it's like going to a hotel. So, of course, it needs to be verified. It needs to be, mm -hmm. it needs to be there. Yeah. It's not like... 20 years ago that you were, you know, there were weird sites and whatever it was all. Now it's, it's a completely different market and that helps as well to be regulated itself, like being verified. And I think it's a great. Yeah. Verification, Amazing. Luca. Get, yeah. You've got to bring it in. Oh, well, uh, you, we have in the, in the, the white paper and um, it's what really is your, like, what, what is your what is your verification process look like? That's what I, that was a question I had for you. I know that you mentioned that it would be done by a community, but how would you do that? So somebody creates a, a listing and uh, there's a, a panel made of uh, five people mm -hmm. who are randomly and algorithmically chosen by the, by the system. And these people are both hosts and guests and at least three of them are from the city. So they also know the, the area. And they analyze um, the listing, looking at the listing they created, so the pictures and the, the, the text, etc. cetera. And we, uh, we check it also on the other platforms. And we also check the reviews in the other platforms. And uh, so we check if what they say is true, like, you know, if it's five minutes from the beach, and then the, the, the position on the map actually is five minutes from the beach. If they, the information is complete, the quality of the pictures, and again, the reviews. So we are actually uh, verifying <laughs> the listing, not the property itself. The property could be completely fake for what we know. Mm. That's why we're going to, if that's, you, have yeah, a, that, if you are new, we, we have this risk, right? 
Uh, yes. in, a, in another level, we could actually send somebody to check, but that costs money and mm. it has to be seen. So we are checking the listing. We, we check in the data they have online and we see if this is enough, which is a step ahead compared to... It's a step ahead from where you're... But it's yeah, not, yeah. not total, mm. it's not complete. No, yeah. no, no I think I'm that's where I, like I, I, I think IPRAC can certainly support that side of things in a way definitely yeah yeah the, the, we are missing this part so that's why i'm so so curious yeah. and interested yeah correct. yeah i call you tomorrow chris huh i call you tomorrow we, we can have a chat as well good yeah we'll, we'll go out for dinner yeah you're very handy in france yeah <laughs> are you in france no yeah 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 that's great the more connections we have the stronger we are absolutely as, as an industry perfect uh guys thank you very much it was great so we're gonna put this online uh, tomorrow on youtube and okay. uh, for people who couldn't be there today uh next week on monday we have another panel it's about reviews this time and reviews is still trust right it's, well, it's more yeah or less absolutely this, this absolutely this is and a big this is a big thing now reviews yeah oh, huge and uh we have we're gonna have christoph christoph salmon from reviews yeah, yeah. uh they export their export the reviews from the otas and they let them use them yeah uh, in your website then yeah. we are gonna have joanne green she she does uh reviews uh monitoring basically and we're going to have Dror Sofer from Tel Aviv, who gave me an incredible idea um, to export every review from all the OTAs, put them on the blockchain as a backup in, so that everybody has their reviews saved in case wow. you know, the Fantastic. Airbnb goes down or your listing yeah. there goes down. And which is very controversial, probably legal, but that's, uh, that's what no, I won't be. the work. Okay, but anyway, that, that's a, the, the, the very nice idea it gave me. Uh, and, and so we're going to discuss this uh, uh, on Monday. Uh, thank you very much again, guys. And you good luck with your. Absolute pleasure. Speak okay. to you tomorrow. Ciao. 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 Oh, sorry, I forgot. I want to say thank you to Gian Paolo. Gian Paolo, are you still there? This is simple. Yeah, Gian Paolo is taking care of all the. Oh, Gian Paolo. You know, is the He's the hidden ghost, and he's, he's making this possible with the host B2B. Uh, thank you very much, Gianpaolo. Thank you, Gianpaolo. Ciao, Gianpaolo. Grazie. Hey, everyone. Okay, bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye, bye. Take care.